بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we have vector x in the v dimensional complex space x has v components where v is a positive integer each component is a complex number for real number p greater than or equal to 1 the lb norm of vector x is the sum k from 1 to v of the magnitude of xk raised to the power p the whole sum is raised to the power 1 over p the l infinity norm of vector x is the maximum component magnitude in the vector the sum k from 1 to v the magnitude of xk to the power p is the lb norm of vector x raised to the power p because we don't have this b root. it is greater than or equal to the l infinity norm raised to the power p because the l infinity norm raised to the power p is the maximum component magnitude to the power p but here we have the sum over all elements of vector x assume that x is not the all zero vector consider the real numbers p and q p is strictly greater than q which is greater than or equal to one from this observation here the sum k from one to v the magnitude of xk to the power p divided by the l infinity norm to the power p is greater than or equal to one let's rewrite this quantity as summation k from one to v the magnitude of xk divided by the l infinity norm which is the maximum magnitude all raised to the power p by the definition of the l infinity norm this quantity here is less than or equal to one if we have a number between zero and one if we raise it to higher powers it gets smaller since q is less than b if we replace this p by q we get a sum that is greater than or equal to that sum this is smaller because we have non-negative numbers in the interval from zero to one raised to a higher power which is p let's rewrite this sum as summation k from one to v magnitude xk to the power q divided by the l infinity norm of vector x to the power q because of this argument this is a quantity greater than or equal to one here it is raised to the power one if we increase the power we get a larger number so this quantity here is less than or equal to the same quantity raised to the power p over q which is greater than one let's focus on this one this quantity and that quantity this is the lb norm of vector x to the power p in the denominator we have the l infinity norm of vector x raised to the power p from here this summation is the lq norm raised to the power q then it is raised to the power p over q in the numerator we have the lq norm raised to the power p downstairs we have the l infinity norm raised to the power p multiply all sides by the bth power of the l infinity norm then raise all sides to the power one over p we get this inequality for a vector x the lb norm is less than or equal to the lq norm where q is less than b this inequality is also true if x is the all zero vector in that case all norms are equal to zero if x is not the all zero vector we get equality if and only if vector x contains just one non-zero element without loss of generality suppose that x is this vector x1 which is non-zero and then we have zeros the l infinity norm is the magnitude of x1 the lb norm i will take the magnitude of x1 to the power p plus zeros when we sum, we just get this quantity. Then when we raise to the power 1 over p, we get also the magnitude of x1. The same happens when we obtain the LQ norm. In that case, the L infinity, the LP, and the LQ norms of vector x will be the same. Now consider this sum, which is the LQ norm of vector x raised to the power q. Consider vectors u and w in the v-dimensional complex space. The magnitude of u Hermitian w is the magnitude of summation k from 1 to v uk conjugate wk this is less than or equal to the summation k from 1 to v the magnitude of uk times the magnitude of wk this is the triangle inequality then we have this sum our bounded by the lr norm of vector u times the ls norm of vector w r and s are real numbers greater than or equal to one they are constrained by the relation that one over r plus one over s is equal to one if r is equal to s is equal to 2, we have the cauchy schwarz inequality, which is a special case of Holder's inequality. We can write Holder's inequality, that summation, k from 1 to v, the magnitude of uk times the magnitude of wk is less than or equal to. We have the product of two terms. One term is raised to the power 1 over r, the other to the power 1 over s. Here we have summation, k from 1 to v, the magnitude of uk to the power r. Here we have the sum, k from 1 to v, the magnitude of wk raised to the power s let's apply holders inequality to our case here we can imagine that every magnitude of xk to the power q is multiplied by one 
by holders inequality. We have an upper bound. So we have two brackets. We raise this bracket to the power one over R and that one to the power one over S. Here we have summation K from one to V. This quantity raised to the power R. We get the magnitude of XK raised to the power QR. In the other bracket, we have summation K from one to V. One raised to the power S. This is just one. We are summing one V times. This bracket is equal to V. This term is equal to V to the power one over S. This is an upper bound on the LQ norm of vector X raised to the power Q. Now we choose QR to be equal to P, which means that R is P over Q. Since we are assuming that P is strictly greater than Q, then this is strictly greater than one. If we make this a choice, this power becomes P. Consequently, this summation here becomes the LP norm of vector X raised to the power P. One over R is Q over P. What about S? We have this constraint, one over S, is one minus one over R. One over S is one minus Q over P. Raise both sides to the power one over Q. On the left-hand side, we get the LQ norm of vector X. On the right-hand side, we get the LP norm multiplied by V, the number of elements or components in vector X raised to the power one over Q minus one over P. Generally speaking, we get equality in holders inequality if UK is equal to an arbitrary complex number C, which does not depend on K, times E to the I, the angle of WK, times the magnitude of WK to the power S over R. UK conjugate times WK is C conjugate, E to the minus I, angle WK, magnitude WK to the power S over R. When we multiply by WK, it is equal to its magnitude, so we add one here, times E to the I, angle WK, this is equal to C conjugate, the magnitude of WK to the power S over R plus one. We have one over R plus one over S equal to one. If we multiply both sides by S, we get that S over R plus one is equal to S. This power here is S. When we sum K from one to V, we get C conjugate, and then the LS norm of W raised to the power S. If we take the magnitude, we get the magnitude of C times the LS norm of the vector W raised to the power S. Magnitude UK to the power R is magnitude C to the power R, the magnitude of this complex number is one. Then we have the magnitude of WK to the power S. If we sum over K, we get the magnitude of C to the power R, the LS norm of vector W raised to the power S. This is the magnitude of U Hermitian W. If we come back here and take the Rth root, we get the magnitude of C, the LS norm of vector W raised to the power S over R, and this is the LR norm of vector U. The LR norm of vector U times the LS norm of vector W is equal to the magnitude of C, the LS norm of vector W to the power S over R plus one. This is equal to S. We have equality. In our case, when we applied holders inequality, we imagined that vector W is the all one vector. Because of this, we will have equality if and only if each component in vector X is the same complex number. To summarize, if one is less than or equal to Q, which is strictly less than B, and we have vector X, the L infinity norm of vector X is less than or equal to the LP norm of vector X, which is less than or equal to the LQ norm of vector X. We have equalities. If vector X has at most one non-zero component, this is less than or equal to the number of components in vector X raised to the power one over Q minus one over P times the LP norm of vector X. We get equality here if all the components of vector X are equal.